I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to our water and chemical additives tutorials. This is the first proper tutorial and it's just a short one to talk about the different types of paper mill that we have in terms of how they use their water. Well, there are actually three types of mill. There's what's called an open mill. Now with an open mill, they bring in water, they use it once by passing it through the paper making system, and then they discharge it. A lot of mills used to operate like that, but now it's very rare to find one. Then there are so-called partially closed mills or partially open mills. These mills will bring in water, it will go through the process, but some of that water will actually be recirculated within the process and only some of it will be discharged. And finally, we have closed mills. Now a closed mill does not mean that it's no longer operation, operating, it means it has absolutely no liquid effluent discharge. So it does bring in water, it uses it in the paper making process, but it doesn't discharge anything. Everything that's brought into the mill is cleaned up and recycled and used again. Now, occasionally the mill will lose some water. It loses it through evaporation out into the atmosphere. Some of it will go out with the product. There may be some spillages. So they're always having to bring in some new water, but they have no liquid effluent discharge at all. And that's the ideal for every paper mill. Every paper mill would like to have that. And why would they like to have that? Well, if you think about the sort of cost structure, so if you're bringing water in, you may bring it in from a borehole or a river, but sometimes you have to pay extraction costs. You have to pay a local authority or a water board money to take water out of where you're taking it from. Once you've taken it, it's not going to be good enough to use in the paper making system. So you will need a water treatment plant. So you've got the capital cost of a water treatment plant. And then you've actually got to run that plant. So the running costs are things like manpower to run it, the chemicals that you need to run it, the energy costs that you'll need to run it. So bringing raw water in has a cost. And then once we're going to discharge the water, you can't just discharge it anywhere and you can't just discharge any water. You've got to treat it to make it reach the consent conditions. So you need an effluent treatment plant. So you have the construction costs of building an effluent treatment cost. Then there's the, the running cost, the manpower. You've got the chemicals and you've got the energy again. And then you've got discharge costs. Discharge costs might relate to something called the Mogden formula. Uh, but it relates to the volume of effluent and the uh, concentration of contaminants. Well, thank you for watching this uh, first video in this series. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. And I look forward to uh, seeing you later on in this series. Bye for now.